facial performance capture has never been this easy. Today we're going to go over one of the best, if not the best, facial performance capture tools, MetaHuman Animator. It's free and available in Unreal Engine 5. For the character we're going to use a custom character from Character Creator 4. We're going to import this character into Unreal to record our facial performance capture using MetaHuman Animator and then copy that animation over to our custom 3D character. So let's have a look! Here is the character we're going to use today. This character is called Amber and she's from the La Familia pack over on the Reillusion store. To get the best possible facial capture, it's very important that your character has really good blend shapes. So today I'm going to use this pre-made character, which I know already has perfect blend shapes set up. You can of course set up your own blend shapes and I have another video showing you on how you can very easily transfer your character to Blender from Character Creator 4 to improve blend shapes. Also I have a video going over more in detail on how to export a character from CC4 or iClone 8 into Unreal Engine 5. So I will go over this step more quickly just to get to the fun stuff later in the video. Make sure that the base are looking good. Just the smile and the vice seams, frown, eyebrows and stuff like that. And even though they might look good in Character Creator, they could potentially be interpreted in a slightly different way in Unreal Engine using MetaHuman Animator. So the process is a bit going back and forth to refine your blend shapes to make sure that they look good for the MetaHuman Animator workflow and not for the Character Creator workflow. Make sure that you enable the MetaHuman and CC Control Rig plugins as well as install the Auto Setup plugin for Unreal Engine 5. All of this is already covered in the video for how you export and import characters into Unreal Engine 5. Make sure to create a master sequence and then import your character into the master sequence using the CC Control Rig blueprint, of course. The first step is to record some facial performance capture using the Live Link Face app on iOS. You could also use a stereo mounted head camera but for this example today, we're going to use the iPhone. Just make sure that you use an iPhone 12 or newer, as we're going to utilize the depth sensor in the newer iPhones. This is going to work in conjunction with the RGB video to give you a very accurate track of your face. Today is just to give you an overall idea of the workflow here and not go into super details of all the settings and stuff. First, we're going to record a calibration clip which is basically a pose facing forwards, then slightly to the left, then slightly to the right. We also need to show our full teeth bite, which I actually forgot to do in this calibration clip. Then the next clip is to record your awesome performance capture. In my example here, I recorded a probably quite boring clip. When the recording is done, we're going to right click in our content browser and create a new folder. We're going to call this folder underscore performers. And in this folder, we're going to right click and create a new folder called the name of the performer. Then once again, we're going to create a new folder called capture source or CS for short. So this is basically just an asset file pointing to the location of your recorded media. For the name of this file, I recommend calling it capture source underscore the date that you recorded all of your media because you might record media over several days. This is a very nice way to keep track of which recording it goes where. Followed by the performer's name. Let's open up this asset file. And here you can choose live link face archives and then storage path to show the uh, file path of your recorded uh, clips from the live link face. You obviously need to transfer these clips from your iPhone to your computer first. The next step is to import these clips. For this, we're going to go into tools and then capture manager. Here is where you can find all your linked media. So select the first capture source that you created and it shows you all of the uh, clips in that folder. Let's add them to the queue and then import all. In this ingested folder, you can see all of your imported media, as well as the depth video and the audio that goes along with it. MetaHuman Animator actually also uses the audio for better lip and tongue movement. Let's create a new folder called MetaHuman Identity, or MHI for short. Right click and go to MetaHuman Animator, 
and then a meta human identity. This asset file's uh, purpose, you can think of it as the 3D scan of your face in the ingested footage. And it uses that scan to create the metahuman skeletal mesh based on your face proportions. When you open up this asset file, it will prompt you to log in to your Epic account. We can now proceed to set our poses for the calibration. First, we need a pose where you're looking straight ahead in front of the camera. This is your neutral pose or the zero pose. And then promote this frame. Unlock the player. Next, tilt your head slightly to the left or the right. And then let's promote this frame to set it as the next calibration pose. Create the opposite pose and hit the promote frame. After this is done, simply hit the metahuman identity solve and Unreal Engine will calculate a few things and then create a skeletal mesh based on your facial features. We need to associate it with a body type even though we're not going to use the full body. So just simply select the body, doesn't really matter which you select. Then let's go over to mesh to metahuman and select the outer rig metahuman identity skeletal mesh only because we only need the face here. And you can now see that the skeletal mesh with an embedded metahuman DNA is now available in your content browser. Let's continue. If you hover your mouse over this triangle over here, you can actually see a list of what's left to do. Our final step is to prepare for performance. This is the most computing heavy task. For me, it usually takes around five to 10 minutes. The final asset you need is a metahuman performance asset. So let's create a new folder called metahuman performance. In this folder, let's right click metahuman animator and go down to metahuman performance. We'll call this metahuman performance underscore the date of which the clips were recorded followed by which performer it was that recorded it, and then which take or which slates you had. In this asset, we can now import everything that we have created previously. So let's first import the footage of our slate where we do some cool performance. Let's select our metahuman identity that we just created. The only setting that you need to be aware of here is to select the head movement mode to control rig instead of transform. Now we can finally record our performance capture. So hit process and it will record some awesome 3D facial performance based on our video using the RGB video and the depth video. It will process three times. When this is done, you can play back your awesome CG performance capture. What I've gone over now is an overview of MetaHuman Animator workflow. So you can use this for MetaHumans. However, we want to use this performance for our custom 3D characters. So we basically need a way to access the keyframes that the animation is using. So you can do that by exporting this as a level sequence over here. Then let's create a new folder called level sequence, where the final exported level sequence will live. I'm going to delete the metahuman performance so we don't mix up the files. Here you can basically leave everything as it is and hit create. If you open up the level sequence you can once again see your cool metahuman animator performance recording. In this exported level sequence let's toggle down the face control board, control rig, and then copy this. Let's go back to our master sequence and then paste this onto the CC face rig. Now you can delete the empty track and you're left with the keyframes from the metahuman animator performance. And whilst it does look amazing, it's not a one-to-one -one transfer. So depending on your character, you'll probably have to do some tweaking to get it to look solid. For the head movement, you want to select your metahuman under the face control board, control rig, 
search for head and here you will find a track called metahuman animator underscore head underscore ik control and here you have rotation roll pitch yaw let's go over to the sequencer curves and here you can see the curves for the head rotation using control a to select all of the keys then copy all of the keyframes using control c let's go back to our master sequence with amber then instead of the face Let's go into the body component on the CC body rig instead. Here you will search for head and you will find a track called head underscore control. It's in this track you have rotation, roll, pitch and yaw. Let's open up the sequencer curves once again and then paste your keyframes onto these tracks using control V. Now you have the head movement from the metahuman. To iterate that you probably also need to go back and forth between Character Creator 4 or Blender to improve your blend shapes and morphs in order to better match the MetaHuman Animator skeletal mesh. I've also noted that the translation between the keyframes of the MetaHuman and the CC control rig isn't a one-to-one -one transfer. So here is an example of how it looks like my character is sneering all the time with her nose like this. And it's very prominent if you look at the curves here. So in order to correct this, I'm going to create an additive layer on the CC face rig. I'm going to rename this to sneer correct. Let's right click on the track, edit section, and then lock the in and out points. So it's a global change and not just on a portion of the video. Let's search for nose. And here you have controls for the nose wrinkle upper, which I'm going to change to a negative value instead, minus one. And just with this small tweak, you can see how it looks instantly a lot better. So I hope you found this video informative. I know this was more of a overview of the general workflow on how to get this going. So if you have any questions about any step of this procedure, or want me to go into more detail, I'll be more than happy to answer your questions down below. And I hope you're as excited as I am for this new workflow using a free tool, which is insanely powerful to get really cool facial performance for your 3D characters. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. If you like this video, you might perhaps like this one.